Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons. And maybe the spirits just want some pussy. <laughs> I'm Mally Moore, and this is the Kimono Linings Playlist, a podcast where we all rock kimonos while we record because they are comfy as fuck and look fantastic. Mally really, like, (laughs) stepped up my recording game this week. Uh If you hear a lightness in my voice and a pep in my step... It's because I am in fucking luxury right now. <laughs> yeah, Mally uh, sent Nathan and I Komodo since the last episode, No Time to Die. And yeah. uh, boy, this this feels right. This it feels does. good. Yeah. And we insisted that our guests wear a kimono as well. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, all guests have to wear the, the guest kimono. I'm like Jesus, only instead of turning water into wine, I'm turning white trash into class. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. I mean, I'm I'm still drinking my Win dixie brand sparkling water. So. <laughs> have either of you, I mean, DC, yours arrived literally an hour ago. Yeah. So you're uh-huh. fresh. This is last minute. This is yours is fresh. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still got the fold crease in it. Mm-hmm. No, this mm-hmm. thing has molded to my ass by this point. <laughs> Hell yeah, he had it on all weekend. Oh, oh my mm, <laughs> respect! Oh my god, that was spooky. There was a voice there that I haven't heard in quite some time. It, it felt like a spirit just joined us. That's right. I don't know if you guys felt that, but Fuck, I, Toby, this is the craziest <laughs> game of Ouija I've ever played. Well, speaking of Ouija, let's bring out this Ouija board and let's see what it says. It says we got a guest on here. Let me see what the name is. Uh, a S S. Well. That's not how that's spelled. Okay. <laughs> maybe we should just introduce it properly. This is, of course, returning, I want to say, for maybe the 17th time. I've kind of lost count. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. a lot, yeah. The host of, oh, that's a scary movie, and uh, the other one, Southern Haunts. <laughs> the uh, other sorry. one. <laughs> I don't remember the name. Wait, wasn't that this? Wasn't the other one one of the subtitles for one of these movies? <laughs> I, I think, think so. you're right. Uh, Paranormal 2, the other, the other one. one. We are rejoined, of course, by Miss Ashley McLaughlin. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Toby! Toby's in the house. (laughs) Always a pleasure. Happy to be here. We had to get you back because uh, while we are also the Kimono Brothers now, we are also the Doritos Brothers because (laughs) we had to do this one. It only made sense. We're going to do all these, I think, at some point. So brace yourselves. No, we fucking aren't. (laughs) There's as many as there are Dorito flavors. I did tell (laughs) Ashley yesterday that, like, the happiest I think I've ever heard DC on a call was during the Paranormal Activity episode. Yeah. 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 And also the only reason that episode breaks an hour in length is because we just started Googling Doritos. It derailed in the most beautiful way. Uh, Absolutely. I should say... If uh, this is your first episode with us or you haven't heard the Paranormal Activity 1 episode, <laughs> buckle the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be very confusing for you. So I highly recommend you check that episode out as well. But sure. yeah, lots of Doritos talk for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> and much like the movie we're talking about this week, you know, which expects you to remember everything that happened in the first one, mm-hmm. but forget it by the time you watch the third one. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right up, right up front, I don't have a of the film for this week but i do have a meal of the film oh, because no i went out right before <laughs> we started went to burger king. i went to burger king that's absolutely <laughs> right and uh not great no i mean i got fries and i got a frozen coke and some stuff and do I'm... you find their fries to be heavy yeah like i think their fries are like dense they leave like a film in your mouth yes. I feel like yeah worst fast food fries well actually no in and out has the worst fast food fries. they, they do. do they do and if you're on the east coast i think wendy's fries have gone to gar absolute shit like they're just absolute garbage now well now what you have to do is you have to you have to specifically they have two different kinds of fries on the menu yeah. what? excuse me yeah. excuse me what, you, what? I think the sea salt fries are a different order what? and they're crispier. The what? Sea salt fries. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking crazy. I shouldn't have to go to a fast food chain and, and <laughs> request a second set of fries that you got back there. Sure. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Well, you have to, you do that at Five Guys. Oh, sure. I guess you had the, well, you have like seasoning that goes on the fries, yeah. right? Like there's not two different. Sea salt is a seasoning. That's true. Technically. But it's also like a, it's a different preparation. It's, it's more like if you went to Chick-fil-A and you didn't say you wanted waffle fries, so they give you just like a flat circle and they're like, these are pancake fries. <laughs> they hand you a potato. Yeah, like that, that's what I mean. That, and also, I cannot believe we're only like two minutes in this episode and we're already talking about fucking Wendy's and Burger King. <laughs> but, 
this is your fault. I also, I also went around. I'm about I, to door dash some five guys. I scoured my my local town, and one my thing local town. that sucks about living in a small town went to is the village. there's not many options for groceries, uh-huh. and I went to every place I could think of, ethnic stores, big chains, grocery stores, could not find, like, a specialty Dorito. I can't oh. find in the same shit. So sorry. I was looking for something interesting to get for this one. I but... know. I was upset when I, I was putting on my kimono, and I was like, damn it, I don't have any cool ranch Doritos. Mm-hmm. You should not have been upset while putting on a kimono, That's you true. fucking idiot. <laughs> So you're telling me you couldn't find, like, sweet cream cheese jalapeno? No, no, I just found the same basic shit over and over. So what I did do is... uh, Those are called tortilla chips. Yeah, those are called tortilla chips, absolutely. Is actually, don't don't fear, because the Cool Ranch... Yes, I can can hear it from here. Nice. Mm. I can Mm. smell them. The best. Mm. I fucking Mm. hate ranch. Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm. Mm-hmm. You disgust me (laughs) on so many levels. I want that as my ringtone. Mm. 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 Delicious. Mm. So do we got Doritos, we got Kabodos, we got some spooky activity going. We do. And uh, we're going to talk about it. So so classy. But before we get started, I really want to thank the families of the deceased (laughs) and the police department. (laughs) Oh, oh yeah, we should admit, at this point, this is just footage being played back of us talking. Like, this is just the audio (laughs) that's been captured after we're all dead. Yeah. You know, Kate. Katie came for all of us. That's right. <laughs> Snapped my neck, made me jump off the couch like a cart. Dude, okay, okay. So I picked this movie not only because I wanted to have the Doritos discussion again, but also <laughs> because this is one of my most enjoyable theater experiences I think I've ever had. Wow. Because Same. when this movie came out, the first movie was a huge success, right? Sure. Huge cult following already. Made so much fucking money for like a million dollars, I think. Yeah. And this franchise dethroned Saw. Right. Like the Saw franchise came to an end basically because it couldn't compete with the the profit margin sure. of paranormal activity. So, so this became the new annual franchise. Yes, yes, exactly. And so this one comes out. I go with my, my girlfriend at the time to see this movie, opening night. Uh-huh. It's one of those huge theaters. It's like stadium seating almost, like almost what you would expect in like an IMAX screening, but without an IMAX screen. Uh-huh. Like pretty big, but and it, it's full. Like every seat is filled. Wow. I'm sitting next to some guy that I don't know, and he's with his girlfriend. And <laughs> is this your first swap experience? Is that what we're <laughs> about to find mm-hmm. out <laughs> extramarital activity oh my god <laughs> they had on pineapple earrings you know <laughs> um that's a, that's a joke for a very slim audience but... i didn't know about the pineapple thing until ashley told me about it because i was gonna hey. buy i was gonna buy a pineapple shirt recently and she goes <laughs> like no that if we go out and you're wearing that people are gonna think you're down yeah like, maybe you yeah. should it yeah <laughs> wait what? Oh, Mally oh. doesn't know about this. Okay. No, so I didn't either. The pineapple thing is if you are a swinger or a swinger couple, you leave pineapples outside your house or you wear pineapple jewelry or pineapple colored t-shirts uh-huh. like Mally, or like not colored, but pattern t-shirts. Yeah. And that lets other swinger couples know that you are DTF or Wait. DTS, I guess. Swap. Yeah. Down to swap. How did that start? I, like why the pineapple? I don't know. Wait. Because SpongeBob is nice. <laughs> oh, because he has so many holes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's porous yeah it is the symbol for hospitality <laughs> wait when we order pizza and my wife gets pineapples on it my, my wife should i read into that oh you might be sending mixed signals to the pizza delivery guy <laughs> i don't know i don't know i can't say for sure if you order a pizza and your wife asks for pineapples <laughs> uh hold on <laughs> Anyway, uh, Seinfeld starring Jeff Foxworthy, better show. <laughs> no one <it> fucking is. <laughs> I'm sitting there next to this guy I don't know. Uh-huh. He's with his girlfriend. I'm with mine. And you know, in horror movies, you reach your hand into his popcorn uh-huh. and surprise, surprise, uh-huh. The pineapple. Uh huh. No, of course, everyone's screaming whenever the big things happen, which is not much in this movie. No, right. so the last thirty seconds, exactly. Everyone's freaking out, you know, screaming. Me and this guy are having a fucking field day, just laughing, <laughs> just having a great time. We bonded, uh-huh. tickling each other, damn near. And then you mentioned the the dad's death in this movie. Yeah, boy, when he leaps off the couch, I watched it three times. It's, <laughs> it's so it's funny. It's one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in a horror movie. Yeah, me and this guy lose it. We are just in tears. <laughs> We're like high fiving. It's a great uh, time. It needs like a little wee. Yes, <laughs> it's a great time. And I'm so jealous of oh. your experience. <laughs> it was a good. T- My girlfriend didn't find it very funny. She she was freaking out the whole movie. Like, sure. why are you laughing? This is scary. And I'm like, that's just the funniest. This is serious. These people are really dead. <laughs> These people are really dead. How dare you? 
I'm like, this is the best comedy of 2010. I'm going to tell you. This is hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had fond memories of this movie, and this was the only the second time I've seen it since that time. Ugh. And I still get a kick out of it. It's still got some funny moments to me. I know it's not supposed to be funny, but, right. like, the, the, the main character, um, fuck, what's her name? Christy. Christy. Her getting drugged down the stairs, Oof. runs back into the bedroom, and then gets drugged down the stairs again. It makes me laugh <laughs> so fucking hard. I don't know why. I think it's just the visual of nothing pulling her and, <laughs> and what's so weird about this movie is there are there are a few scant moments that i think are actually effective as a scare mm -hmm. but then they are killed because they go on too long yeah. like the the visual of the baby being lifted out of the crib is really f scary so good until his head is like fucking dragging <laughs> yeah. <the> <laughs> yep. 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 yep that's what i'm saying this movie is very funny but i i could also see people being scared by those moments sure. like her getting drawn down drugged down the stairs is a really genuinely scary moment yeah but like it's played for comedy when she uh, she runs up the stairs and it happens again. Right. <laughs> but I think almost every effective bit in this movie, we'll get into it, is done better in the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these this, these people don't do anything no. to try and, like, figure this thing out. They're just like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Shit's weird, huh? What do you think, guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, you saw this one in the theater, right? I did. I don't remember who, what, or why, but, like, I went to go see Was it. Was your boyfriend at the time laughing with a strange man and his girlfriend <laughs> at the theater? Because that would be serendipitous. You know what? He was. Oh. It was so weird. Was that you? I don't, it could have been. I was wearing a pineapple <laughs> t-shirt. I don't know if you know. <laughs> no, I saw it in theaters and I, well, as you know, I talked about on the last paranormal episode, I was so into the first one mm -hmm. and I was like super gung-ho about this one. I don't remember it being as boring yeah. as it was this time. Yeah. But I remember like screaming at the top of my lungs when the all the cabinets flew open. Yeah. It's great. It's a it's a great little moment. Yeah. Like I, I remember being scared in the theater, but yeah, it now it's just like a slog kind of to get through. Yeah. yeah. I marathoned, I think, the first three. I was super late to this series. Mm -hmm. And uh like years ago, when the third one came out, I watched all three of them in one night. And Gross. I think I just kind of <laughs> lumped the second one in as being good because I still I still really like the first one. I still think the third one is the best of the series. Mm -hmm. And I think this one was just so innocuous that I was like, oh, yeah, that was part of a fun, scary night that I had. Yeah, yeah. it took us two sittings to get through it this time. <laughs> oh, boy. No, but I and I think part of like the reason I liked it when I first saw it was sort of like the connective tissue. Like, sure. oh, my gosh, here's Katie. Like, how are they going to make this like tie in? Sure. Yeah. To you know the last one and even when we watched it now i was like i couldn't remember i was like is mika dead yet what was the time frame of the last one and i was trying to like connect those dots yeah. even though they were stupid yeah thankfully the movie tells us when he dies because <laughs> yeah. i was like right. what the fuck is happening no i i knew katie was in this one and on this rewatch i was shocked at how early she shows up she's within like the first five minutes of the movie yeah, yeah. Uh, no i think there's some interesting things they do in terms of time and how they play with it and how they kind of connect this one to the first one of like oh uh the dad burning the picture is why the pictures burned in the first movie and right. stuff like that. I, I do like that stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is mostly a 90 minute movie that is only about 20 minutes worth of material. Yeah. But that's kind of all these movies, really. Like once you've seen them, the first hour or so is basically nothing. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. they all go through the same, like something weird happened, right? No, nothing's weird happening. Okay. But it, <laughs> at least in the first one, like I liked Katie as a character yeah. and I found Mika so annoying that I was not like bored the whole time yeah. this one I, I do not give a shit about any of these characters yeah. and then about an hour and 10 minutes in they decide that the daughter Allie is the main character yeah so we follow her for a little while the daughter is the most interesting character in the movie to me yeah. honestly yeah she listens to the misfits and the Ramones she's fucking right? cool <laughs> right? that girl does not listen to those bands no <laughs> and this dad is maybe the most milk toast bland oh. character oh my gosh he is the daddest <laughs> dad to have ever dad uh -huh. yeah his nemesis is a pool filter. <laughs> like he refers to the pool cleaning robot as a little buddy. Uh huh. Oh, I I should mention if you haven't seen Paranormal Activity two in a long time, the Burger King bit you might be a redneck. Well, that too. But the Burger King bit may be very confusing for you. So it is <laughs> yeah. a throwaway line in this movie because you see you see this house, you see the how the life of luxury these people are living in, <sighs> and it's a one income family. Yeah. This dude mentions that he owns a Burger King, mm -hmm. right? No, he is the. Burger King. <laughs> no, because that's the joke, right? Like, that's the only 
only way you can afford that. Oh, no. They establish he is not the Burger King. <laughs> yeah, he says, I am not the Burger King. So this guy owns a Burger King and lives like this in 2010. Man, the housing market did not affect the rich at all. Right. But it also, it comes up because Mika does that thing where it's like, if you... If you're if you know a guy from the office or like your your like sister's friends or whatever, you have one thing to talk about. Yeah. And so he he walks up and he's like, you know, I went to a Burger King and threw your name out and I couldn't get some free food. It's so <laughs> it's fucking a, obnoxious. That is such a Mika lied though. Like it that is. guy is the worst. Uh, God, yeah. I hate him. He's the worst. I hate him so much. Oh, when when did Mally see this for the first time? That, that was gonna be my next question, Mally. What was your uh, first uh, time seeing this movie? What was that like? I have no fucking clue. Okay. All right. I, I, can... I honestly, I know I saw this movie at some point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I have no fucking memory of when it was. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was eating a Dorito. Say that again. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, this I did. The, I did this bit like a month ago. Uh -huh. So much better. Yeah, and you did it without wet mouth sounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was it like on this rewatch for you, Manly? I know you said you fell asleep, so I'm guessing not engaging. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what fucking answer were you expecting right there? I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. But okay. Well, if this is your first time tuning in, maybe it wasn't clear up front, but we are a show. <laughs> we are a show. We are a show, uh, full stop, that uh, watches movies such as Paranormal Activity 2 that do not end in a happily ever after. Mm -hmm. And we try to find the silver lining in those endings to, uh, you know, make it not so scary at the end of things, you know? Mm -hmm. This movie ends with murder and child endangerment and kidnapping. <laughs> so we got to find a silver lining to that. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the goal of the show. So why don't we talk about the creation, the release, the production, all that good stuff about Paranormal Activity Dose. So the year, as I mentioned, is 2010. The director is Todd Williams. The movie stars, and Nathan, I think you'll appreciate this first person's name, uh -huh. Sprague <laughs> Graydon. <laughs> well, you see Scott. <laughs> Brian Boland. Katie Featherston. This is a great name. Vivis. Vivis. That's the, uh, the, the, the nanny character. Oh, Martine. Yes. 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 Mika Sloat and Molly Epp. Mika Sloat. <laughs> the budget was only $3 million, and they managed to guess. Anyone want to take a guess how much this movie grossed worldwide? A lot. Don't care. <laughs> it's like 200 million, right? Like somewhere around there. It's close. 177 million dollars. Wow. Holy fucking shit. Right? And it currently sits at a 58% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yep. That sounds about right. No, just God, no. I kind of want to look now at like the Rotten Tomato scores for this one and like the rest in this franchise because I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine any of them are over a 70%. The first one's like an 83%. Oh, really? Okay. I feel like I should know that since we did that movie, but I've heard um that fifth one is actually good. Which one is that one? The ghost dimension or the marked ones? I think it's the marked ones. I could be wrong. That one, I think I saw. Oh yeah, I, I did like this one. It's the director of- uh... You guys could be making these fucking names up and I would have no idea. <laughs> Paranormal activity, Doritos activity. Hmm. <laughs> That's the one with like the guy, right? The teenage guy? Yes. Yeah, okay. Guys, one came out last year. Yeah. I watched it. <laughs> yeah, the director of the marked ones also made freaky and the happy death day movies mm -hmm. so it's it's got kind of a mean streak to it okay so yeah par Ooh, paranormal activity 2 tokyo nights why didn't we watch that one <laughs> what? Hang on, what? Huh? <laughs> came out the same year as this paranormal that's, that's gotta be a remake right oh, I don't like, know. A, like a japanese remake well it says paranormal activity 2 so yeah they, i think yeah i think this is like a japanese like uh huh I don't know. Huh. <laughs> 30 Nights of Paranormal Activity with the Devil Inside the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh. <laughs> I like that title. Uh, 83% for the first one, 57 for this one, 66 for the third. Okay. But somehow this one is certified fresh and Paranormal Activity 2 is raw. I thought it was a percentage score that determined that. I don't know. All right. 23% for the fourth one. Yeah. 39 for the marked ones, 50. 15% for the ghost dimension. And this one, this this hidden paranormal activity movie, 30%. So it's it's fine. The ghost dimension just fully drops the found footage thing oh. for like the final chapter. And then the next of kin is a reboot. I have not seen it. Ashley watched it though. Yeah. It's a reboot? Yeah. No, it's not really a it's not really a reboot. Really? It's like it doesn't it doesn't tell the same story. Mm, so it's okay. yeah. 
So it's okay. It's in the same cinematic universe. Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like if I remember correctly, this girl is like adopted and she's trying to find her family and there's that like That is the scariest thing imaginable. Weird Amish <laughs> things happen. Weird Amish things. Okay. <laughs> what are the Amish like in the Activia verse? <laughs> oh, so it takes place in Indiana? Paranormal Activity Indiana. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. I'd star in that movie. <laughs> well, let's watch the trailer to refresh our memories. Yes. Uh, I'm sure this trailer is probably just a bunch of words on screen that's because this is around that time where demand it was a thing do you guys remember demand it huh or like you go on a website and say i want to see this movie and they determined which theaters get the movie first do you guys not remember that oh i don't remember this at all oh, no. no oh yeah this was a big campaign in these paranormal activity movies it's like if you live in a small town and you want to see it we got to get enough people to say they want to see it we can't just release it in the theater sure so i'm guessing that's gonna play a part in it but we'll we'll see what in the bankruptcy <laughs> here we go Already as thrilling as the movie. <laughs> Lots of low hums. The ending of the first one. Gotta show the first movie, yep. So this was definitely released before they shot the sequel? Oh, probably. In 2009. See? Oh, wow. You demanded it. Oh man, do you remember these kind of trailers? Yeah. The night vision goggles in the theater. We were Ashley and I were just talking about the House of Wax uh, ad campaign that was mostly that and see Paris Hilton die. Yeah, like it was I the weirdest that. ad campaign. I remember that. So strange. Oh shit, this trailer's still going. I went to get some food. <laughs> nothing can prepare you for a dog being scared. A dog barking at nothing. For those interested, I'm having some sea salt caramel milk chocolate. Oh. <laughs> Did you have to go to Wendy's and request the sea salt caramel chocolates or do they just give you the, <laughs> the standard caramel chocolates without the sea salt? Nah, bro, this this five guys. Question. Why didn't they name this movie Paranormal Activity? Better time. What? What was? Who was this person standing in the doorway? I was wondering that too. That's not in the movie. That's not the yeah. That's not the shot from the movie. That's not Katie. Mm -hmm. That's not Christy. Yeah, half of this trailer isn't in the movie. Yeah, th those audience members weren't even in the movie. <laughs> that was a big like issue after the trailer came out. A bunch of people fucking complained. Really? Yeah, man. I'm guessing that's the daughter. You're. You know what? You're right. There's also a ghost baby because he's in the reflection of the mirror, but not in the crib. <laughs> Ooh. See, I kept waiting for them to do anything interesting with the mirror yep. in the movie, yep. and they fucking don't. Yep. But maybe one of the proposed directors for this movie would have. Okay, so you talked about this off there. I want to hear this list, and you said there's one that's going to blow my mind, okay. so I'm prepared. Oh, buddy, there is. So originally, they hired uh, Kevin Gruterd, who directed uh, Saw 6, mm -hmm. and he for some there was some kind of issue with his contract, so he was brought back to direct Saw, the final chapter. Okay. So other directors considered to replace him before Todd Williams included Brian De Palma. <laughs> <laughs> I was the Dorito. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, okay, so I was eating a Dorito. What was that? Uh, Brian De Palma? Brian fucking De Palma. Oh my god. Oh my god. Akiva Goldsman, Brad Anderson, uh, the director of The Machinist, mm. and Greg McLean, the director of uh, Wolf Creek. Oh my god. Brian De Palma. Brian De Palma. Yeah, they were like, hmm. Uh, the director of Saw 6 is unavailable. Can we get one of the greats? <laughs> Can we get uh, the guy from, uh, you know, Body Double? Yeah. And, like all, the, all those other movies. Like Jason Blum sitting there, you know, looking at the <laughs> looking at the proposal for the new movie. I was about to say the screenplay, but that doesn't exist. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm getting a lot of Untouchables vibes. I was just about this. to say, mm, <laughs> man, there's a kid in Untouchables. If we could have a kid in our movie, there you go, Brian De Palma. We could call this movie Toby's Way. Mm. So Toby doesn't get introduced to the third movie, right? The name Toby. Well, Toby is the demon from the first two, but he's not named until the third one. <laughs> yep. God. What if what if in the third movie at the end, as they're calling him Toby and Toby over and over, he's just like Oh <laughs> Jesus! I thought, it. Right. I thought it. I don't know that we can legally make that joke, but uh, <laughs> we had to bleep that one out too. Fuck. Well, okay. I love that you said it so quietly too. <laughs> I, I didn't feel very confident in it. You're like, that's just for the people here. Yeah, yeah, that's just for you guys. That's just for the room. Yeah. Thank God we're not recording this conversation. So the spookiest thing about this movie, and I don't know if you guys caught it. But it's near the beginning of the movie, and it's when when they're having the barbecue outside in the back. Uh -huh. Did you guys notice anything weird about stuff on the table? 
Mm. Like the table with all the different food and beverages and stuff. I don't think so. No. Uh, it was just Spam and Budweiser. <laughs> I was so put off by the, the house tour. Yeah. But yes. Well, I so, had already stopped paying attention by the time we got to that scene. I didn't <laughs> understand. So the spookiest thing in the movie for me is uh, whatever the fuck this is that's <gasps> on the table. What? That's dog food covered in Cheez-Its and Parmesan. Okay. What okay, is so that? Y'all, that's a Dorito casserole. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is what I'm... I, this is what I'm thinking it Why is. Why do you have such a good, clear shot of it? <laughs> it's worse every like every second that I look at it. Look away. This is what I think it is. This is what I think it is. I think it's ground beef. <gasps> Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. <laughs> I don't know why. And I think sour cream, but it's so fucking lumpy. Uh, no, no, bro. That's cottage cheese. Okay, oh, I, thought I, it was, I, it, I thought it was feta. I, I thought it was like grated Parmesan. Oh, oh, yeah, same. No, that is cottage cheese. I think that you're right. That shit is chunky. I think you're right, Mally. It could be cottage it's just, this is the most white people white food fucking uh, what oh my f- god you're right it's like goopy on the cheeses right? <gasps> i don't like it what the fuck is this y'all we need to get our t- we need to get some tiktok detectives on this <laughs> shit like, what the fuck please is tell this? me tiktok please tell us what this is here's the thing though I'd fucking try it. No. No. What? No. 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 I think it's just no. my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ashley. Ashley, thank God there's someone sane on this podcast. What? This is, Mally said it. This is dog food. And I like Cool Ranch Doritos, and I will not eat that. Yes. Look, I have a garbage stomach. I mean, I'm going to take, take a bite. Yeah. What? I'm going to find out. I'm not saying I'm going to finish the bowl. This looks like somebody already took a bite out of it. Exactly. It looks like someone already ate it. Dustin, <laughs> I grew up white trash. I did too, but this looks this this if it, you put the word casserole in something yeah. i'm gonna have a bite same, no same oh, no bull, uh, yeah i spent too much time on a farm in alabama to not fucking yeah. bite into that bowl absolutely not <sighs> that's not going anywhere near my mouth i gotta i gotta close the picture guys i oh can't my God. i can't i can't look at it no more we're recording this right before valentine's day <laughs> <laughs> oh i know it bill i'm making priscilla for her, her valentine's day dinner i'm on board with the whole found footage thing like it was it was an interesting trend <laughs> but um there's moments in this movie where I'm just like, why the fuck are they filming? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like when she's having that serious conversation with Katie. Could you I'm imagine? Like, wh- why? Why are you shooting this? Could you imagine like dumping your heart out and someone's just sitting there holding a camera staring at you? Yeah, yeah that's Katie in the whole first movie. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. She's like, you remember how bad things got with mom? And it's like, no, motherfucker. Like, why are we filming this? <laughs> that's most found footage movies, though. Is most of the time you're like, does anyone need to be filming right now? Oh, my favorite thing is when they hear like someone scream or the dog get hurt. And so their first thought is, I need to grab, grab the, the camera, camera yep. and run downstairs. Yep. But I mean, without that, we don't have a movie, right? True. Or do we just cut to the, the in-house cameras that are mounted? I just feel, I mean, I don't know. I think it works whenever the idea of the film is that it's supposed to be a documentary yeah. or like the um, like the like this new movie Deadstream where the guy's wearing a fucking GoPro for the movie. Like that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. But when it's this where they're like, no, the whole movie movie must be at all times yeah, like why are you filming cameras being installed i, I don't know like, <laughs> i mean that's that was the thing about these early aughts like i mean just in general in pop culture like people got camcorders and they recorded fucking everything i mean oh, this yeah. is right at the boom of youtube and everything so like that people were just cameras in their face all the time well like even before i mean there's a i was telling ashley about this the other night there is video of like the day i was born with my dad like putting a camera in my fucking face and oh saying my God. like get used to this blinking light buddy it's Aww. really sweet but also just like you know yes we all fancied ourselves documentarians <laughs> oh so like acting wasn't a choice for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, no, I've had performance anxiety since I was born. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, so this movie starts in a pretty good, like, expository way of, like, let's use the camera to give you a tour of the house because there's a newborn baby. Sure. Like, that makes sense. I think it's great narrative device to, like, get you acclimated to this house and the geography and everything. And to make you dislike this dad immediately because oh, he's yeah. bragging about changing diapers and mom's like, I actually had the fucking baby. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm carrying the everything inside myself. And he also has to show that he has two man caves <laughs> yes. for some some reason yeah i couldn't believe it and ashley what did you point out he, they have they I have said, two living rooms 
I was like, this family is rich because they have one living room with a television and one living room without a television. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which he refers to as my 50 inch monster. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> TVs will never get bigger than this. Yeah. The dad says some things in this movie uh-huh. that are questionable. I am not a fan of the dad. Oh, yeah. He seems like a turd. I don't want to see him release the Kraken. Uh, <laughs> I, I almost made that my intro. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Though. He literally says, let me release the Kraken. Uh, <laughs> man. Like, sh- but it's, it's still her call. <laughs> this, this is 2010, which is the year of Clash of the Titans being released. Sure. And that's, do you guys remember that quote? That was everywhere. Sure. Everyone was saying that shit. It's also a post uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2 yeah. world. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. No, that joke was run into the ground. Uh-huh. Everyone said that shit. The fucking gif of Liam Neeson saying it over and over was... Release the Kraken. But my biggest concern about this house is they have a fireplace in the bedroom? Yes, like, the that's same a, thing. That is a fire hazard. Right. That, that can't be good. You're in a carpeted room. Ugh. What are you talking about? I don't know. I want a fireplace in my bedroom. That seems cozy as fuck i i would too big i don't have carpet in there <laughs> uh lifestyles of the rich and famous i guess these burger kings amongst <laughs> us <laughs> burger burger kings among burger men peasants. i love there at the beginning like when they first like when katie first holds the baby because uh-huh. that baby's looking at her like who the fuck i know <laughs> i thought that baby was giving a great side eye to her right away uh-huh. like mm, i don't trust you at all the baby's so cute <laughs> man i was missing so much because uh, the daughter's boyfriend is not really properly introduced yeah. and so I kept trying to figure out who the fuck is this this jughead looking ass in <laughs> yeah. the pool like pulling off his beanie Katie is the voice <laughs> of the audience right there she's like oh you gotta you gotta go swim and then put the beanie on while you're still in the pool because that way you keep it dry right yeah okay that makes sense yeah. you're smart yeah I, li- I liked Katie at that moment I look I think Katie Featherston comes out of this movie pretty squeaky clean again mm-hmm. I think she's great <laughs> yeah no she does a great performance no and then I love the foreshadowing they do too because this is a prequel and a sequel simultaneously mm-hmm. and she drops little lines that if you've seen the first movie kind of play a little bit differently where she's sure. like yeah i'm the evil step aunt uh-huh or uh when they're like where's mika at? oh he wasn't up for hanging out today it's like oh okay i see what you guys are doing uh-huh you know nice little foreshadowing yeah and then maybe besides the cheese it casserole uh-huh. the second scariest <laughs> thing about this movie is this pervy camera repairman oh, that's yeah. doing the installation yeah. yeah you can't get away with anything you can't hide from anything. The cameras are always on. I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> I will always hear you. Oh, I don't like it. I think he gives a smile too. I'm like, no, I don't like that. No, nope. I don't like this at all. This girl is a teenage girl. You shouldn't say shit like that to her. And it doesn't help that I, I feel. Look, and maybe it's just because I'm, a, I'm a struggling artist, man. But mm-hmm. like, I feel so little pity for someone saying our foyer has been destroyed. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, these look like, like these look like fucking show houses yeah. like none of this came like this all came with the place that they're in yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah their giant parrot painting got knocked over <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and then the dad i mean i know it's 2010 but the most swaggerless guy in this in the neighborhood yeah because he's rocking a polo long khaki shorts and sandals and i'm like <laughs> dude this house you don't belong in this house no. like, this is not this is not for you. You're not. You're a Burger King. <laughs> Dress accordingly. <laughs> Here's the thing. Every rich person in Florida, in Northwest Florida, dresses like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Ashley can tell you every person that goes to like a like a fundraising event in Pensacola, mm-hmm. especially for the arts, mm-hmm. they show up. They will show up to a fucking opera in cargo shorts and flip flops. Just, just the worst. Yes. A polo cargo, sh- cargo shorts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just the wild. worst. Just the worst. But uh, get used to seeing all these fucking static shots of the house yes that's most of the runtime i would say three-fifths of the runtime is just static shots from the cameras mounted on the walls mm-hmm. i did have a question in 2010 the superstitious hispanic nanny was already a trope right oh yeah i mean that trope is uh, as old as time right yeah. and, and the it beast. sucks because <laughs> it sucks because not only are they are they going in for some some intense uh cliches mm-hmm. but the dad is fucking racist yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a racist yeah 100 yeah, percent he like he literally says she's killing goats in the backyard yeah yep. and he, he won't let her put sage in the house and mm-hmm. he he does try at times to like communicate in spanish with her and stuff like that sure. but i'm like the fact the fact that he just fires her right away yeah because he doesn't want quote unquote any of that shit in his house she was burning some incense yeah. oh no the most superstitious thing ever burning sage <laughs> <laughs> now my question is does the ghost leave the shit in the toilet oh that's a good question yeah who left the shit in the toilet that's 
scene is so weird. Who left the big giant deuce in the toilet? <laughs> Ugh. I forgot about that. Uh, when it happened, I was like, surely this is not a plot point that is of, of any concern. Why I are we wish. Here? Oh my God, I wish. <laughs> With <laughs> that, that was the main crux of the story. It's funny. <laughs> who took a shit in the toilet? <laughs> And then the dad, I think, also says, to talks, is it to the daughter? He says, you were talking to yourself all crazy. Like. Yeah, I don't know. He 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 likes to make fun of everybody being upset, even when he's upset. It's so weird. You know, he's he's no Mika in terms of being annoying. Yes. But he's still just the worst. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. I guess that's that's kind of how this franchise goes. Like, all the men in this franchise are just the worst. <laughs> Excluding maybe the dad in part three, who, yeah, like... Yeah, I think he's sort of into it, but all the other men are like, look at these crazy women. I know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't remember much about that third one except the ending, because I think I've only seen that one once as well, yeah. but... Uh... Yeah, no, I just this the fact that this is now the second movie in a row, and I'm like, oh, the man, the male character is just going to be the most obnoxious out of anybody. Mm -hmm. It's 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 real bad. I do like this recurring thing with the baby trying to get into, into the, the closet. closet. Yeah. yeah, it's a good little bit. I think that's really effective, but it's you know, again, it's like it doesn't really pay off at all. No, it is annoying that they don't do much with the the mirror on the closet door. Yeah. I think it's lots of opportunities to do some weird shit with that, but they just don't. Definitely. And I do like speaking of the baby, baby hunter. Mm -hmm. I love that he cries immediately after seeing Mika for the first time. I'm like, dude, <laughs> honestly, same. Same. Uh -huh. same. Same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Mika's like talking about the camera. He's like, I love it. It has more features than my girlfriend. I oh, know. Such an asshole. And I'm, he also makes uh, extracurricular activities jokes. Right. With right. Him too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you guys ever get freaky with this? Come um. on. <laughs> It's the worst. Yep. Then they there's a weird editing bit here uh -huh. where it it cuts to like another one of the nights, and I see that the time another one. is 1045. Uh-huh. And then I see the nanny coming from around the corner. I'm like, holy shit, does this nanny live in the house? Why is she here so fucking late? I think she I think she is a live yeah, I think she does live in. Yeah, but it's I think not, she does live there. It's not though, because then the, they come back from a couple's date. And I'm like, oh, that's why they were out. That's why she's here so late. Oh, okay. Because when he when he fires her, like she's got like a super suitcase pack oh yeah. you're right shit no i was so confused by the timeline here because there is a bit where like they're uh, you know in the tub they're having a you know the release the kraken bit ugh, ugh. the next morning katie's in the house having watched the baby overnight right. and then everybody else comes in for breakfast right. so i'm like were you having a date in your own home right. like, yeah mika's there and everything like mm -hmm. hey katie come over and watch the baby while we fuck in our bedroom that's how big his house is they, they can do that we'll be on right. this side of the house you guys just stay over there you can use living room too Ugh. did you guys notice all the african art in his uh oh, office oh my god it is one of one of his man caves yeah, yeah it reminded me of the juneteenth episode of atlanta uh, the husband uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely and and this kid this this little baby hunter looks so much like Haley joel osment oh that it was gosh. distracting to yeah. me. Like, really? I, I thought so. But Haley Joel Osment now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I think we talked about this off camera, but the teenage daughter is maybe the sanest person in this whole movie. Like, I like this character a lot. Yeah. yeah. But she's like, why did you fire the nanny? She wasn't doing anything harmful. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. One voice of reason. And also, like, she has that really great moment where she tells her, because her dad's saying shit like, oh, it's probably just your stepmom's kooky hormones, uh -huh. which is like not something you tell your daughter. I uh, know. But she's like, she's like, it could be a good thing if we're haunted, because what if it's mom? Uh. And it's maybe the best acted line in the movie yeah. yes and then i love that that's kind of just left there like because yes. yeah i don't think at, up to that point it's known that christy is not her biological mother She's... she mentions it early on but Does it's she? like okay. yeah it's not like a super i think it's like really offhand yeah because yeah. yeah. katie says i'm the evil step aunt right. that's right yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you're right so but like as parents what is uh, dustin and ashley what is your reaction if the you come in the nanny's holding the baby and like just throwing sage in the air mm. um, uh, well, you know me. I'm going to join her. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'll be like, let's get the crystals out. Let's, you know. <laughs> I just don't like the scent of sage. Mm. And that's the only reason I would be annoyed. I'm like, come on, man. But mm -hmm. no, I mean, as long as the baby's fine, I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, I if I'm inviting someone into my home to stay either full time like this woman or even just babysitting. Yeah. I always try to be like, you know, just as long as no one's getting hurt and nothing's getting broken, do whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah, that's fair. It's definitely not a fireable offense. I'll say that. No, absolutely. Not. Scream at the kid yeah. as long as he's not getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
I, I have more notes about this dad too that I just as they were coming to me, I was writing them down. But like <laughs> one note is I haven't seen they, they do a time jump from the time the baby comes home. Uh, a year. He's already yeah. A year, yeah. They, like thank God the subtitles were on because mm-hmm. someone in the background goes, I can't believe he's already a year old. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't seen this dad parent once. No. This, this guy has done nothing for this kid no. at all. Their Burger King does not parent. Yeah, the Burger King is not taking care of his Burger Prince. I don't know what <laughs> what's going on. Who's going to inherit this thing when he's gone? Well, look, <laughs> if he tries to do any parenting, the terrorists win, that's as he explains tr- to us. True, true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Ed Kirsty just laughs at that line, he, boy. But he says... <laughs> a fucked up line yeah i miss my fun wife i think i said oh fuck off when we were watching it uh-huh. <laughs> and katie is in the right most of the first movie but chrissy is so much more like innocuous yeah. like she is not offensive at all she's not like raining on his parade at all no. she's like hey motherfucker i just gave birth like yeah. <laughs> and i'm stepmomming to a teenage daughter like i i could use some space <laughs> who's going through her punk phase Ugh. And this dad, I've already talked about his 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 clothing, but every scene gets worse and worse. And he's because he's dressed like at one point Ted Levine in The Hills Have Eyes. Like <laughs> he's dressed like he's about to turn off his body cam. Like I just, Jesus guys, Christ. I could not get behind him at all. Sorry. There's not one moment where I'm like, yeah, I like this guy. No. Not once. Mm-mm. And I do like the the stove catches on fire in like the uh, middle of the night. Uh-huh. Maybe one of the lines besides the next night that I left the hardest is when he, he goes down the stairs. He's like, oh, fuck. And he's trying to take the flame and fire print outside. And then the, the daughter is in the hot tub with her boyfriend having a late night liaison. I thought that was so fucking. Because he goes, I thought I told you good night, Brad. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Oh, all right. That's that's a good line. I do like that. But oh. boy, are you unlikable as shit. Absolutely. God damn it. That's so funny. Like, it's so <laughs> fucked up. He's about to turn off his body cam as one of those. That's exactly how he's dressed in this movie. It's so perfect. Yeah. It's so perfect. <laughs> if he wasn't a Burger King, he definitely would have rose ranks in the, in the police academy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And, and then, Mal, you mentioned this earlier, but what does this demon have against pool, the pool cleaner? Like, why, why is this guy fucking? Man, I don't fucking know. <laughs> is the point of the pool cleaner yeah. yeah there's also multiple times where we see the dog abby fighting the pool cleaner yeah. so is the implication that the dog sees toby grabbing the pool cleaner and tries to grab it i i don't i don't know because like i one of the funniest moments of the movie too is when they're reviewing the footage and they're just watching the pool cleaner just crawl out of the yeah. pool. It's so funny. I love watching it. Like it's Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Oh, oh that'd be adorable. It. Oh my God. That's the best twist of the movie if at the end it reveals it was just Marcel the whole time. Oh yes. my God. Marcel the Shell dragging Christy down the stairs into the basement <laughs> would be the funniest fucking thing. He went parasailing on a Dorito. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> That's how you bring it back. Bring it all back. Oh, oh my God. This, uh, this might be the least exciting Ouija board uh, sequence I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. Even <laughs> counting the one from the first one. I got some laughs out of this. So this was really good. It was funny. I mean, Brad sucks. Yes. But... Also, this is this is Nathan and I on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's that's wholesome. Yeah, it's it's difficult to see myself uh, represented in media. <laughs> oh, it smells pussy. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> that's pretty funny. But she does. She says this is the worst game of Ouija ever. And Ouija. I was like, I've never heard it referred yeah. to that. Yeah. The a game of Ouija. How do you win that game? Uh, you continue living, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote down here too that they come up with a pretty good band name right here, mm-hmm. Pussy Hunt, Pussy which Hunt. I thought was really good because that is really good. She she starts dying laughing at the fact that it said pussy, and then clearly the ghost is trying to spell out hunter, but only gets to hunt. Yeah, and then he goes, she goes, Pussy Hunt, Pussy <laughs> Hunt, and starts cracking up. <laughs> I feel like that's really close to like the first draft of names you sent me for the Fever of the Rage. Like, there, was, there were definitely like three different word like pussy piss crimes <laughs> pussy hunt <laughs> i had a good i had a good list going yeah I, I still think we gotta call the album piss crimes i'm still <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ piss crimes <laughs> i like this bit with the shadow moving over Allie while she's on the couch yeah. very good that, that one of the few creepy moments of the movie yeah, yeah. But the thing was, I kept wondering throughout the runtime of this movie, do I think this is scary or am I just happy that something is happening? Anything right. is happening on screen. Yeah. 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 It, it might be a little bit of both. Like there's a bit where like this, the long, scary teapot whistle, mm-hmm. I think is like a, a good bit of sound design. But I was also just like, am I just excited that there's something loud and creepy happening? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel you on that. Well, this movie tones down the low rumbling, like 
letting you know something's about to happen. Like, yes. it doesn't do it as much, mm-hmm. which I appreciate. And in one of these little scenes, like, during the daytime, you know, because that nothing ever happens during the day. Right. I almost lost my mind because as a throwback to the first paranormal episode we did, I thought this couple also didn't sleep with a blanket and just had a sheet. <laughs> Psychopath. Uh-huh. And then as it, it pans over, you do see, like, the comforter or the duvet sitting, like, I guess, like, Christy was making the bed. Oh, but, like, yeah. The way they cut into the scene, it's just I saw the sheet only, and I was like, "This mo- these motherfuckers, get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> and then Toby's a little bit of a scamp mm-hmm. because of all the little uh, bits he gets in this movie, like all the little spooky bits. I think maybe the funniest one is when the dad goes and gets in the pool, uh-huh. and then he's gonna go get in the hot tub, but it's too hot, so you just see him come in from off screen, just jump back into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that was? Yes. There are so many bits here where I was just like checking out yeah, right? yeah, yeah. it's like oh we're just watching the dad yeah. get into the pool he goes into the pool and then he decides to crawl into the hot tub but it's apparently like somehow so hot that he like he jumps back into the pool wow. to cool off and then he comes inside and he's like i i need some frozen peas or something i'm so hot that's what that was about okay <laughs> uh, man and then the, i think the daughter even says something like it can't even go up that high oh. like, <laughs> That one might not even be a Toby thing. That might just be the dad just making shit up. Just being an idiot. Just being an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the, the spooky shadow over, over her while she's sleeping was really good. And then, like you actually talked about earlier, the same with the demon pulling the baby up out of the crib. It's it's really goofy, but yeah. I just can't help but laugh because you're right. It goes, it goes on just like a second too long. Mm-hmm. A second too long as it's like coming over the side of the crib. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, like that baby flat on his face. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> Moving across the bed. My favorite thing is the bit once the once we cut back to the baby oh my out God. of the crib, it goes <laughs> opens the closet, changes its mind, uh-huh. and goes back upstairs. Yeah, so okay, that baby might as well have said nope. I, I wrote down. <laughs> Because this is what also, I keep saying it, but this is also one of the funniest fucking things in the movie. Uh-huh. This is baby's big day out. Yes. 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 When it cuts to the kitchen, just a static shot, and then the baby just walks in out of frame. I, I fucking, lo- I almost woke Priscilla up laughing so hard. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley was saying, she's like, fuck, I love watching babies walk around. <laughs> He's just walking around this empty house. He's just like, meh, meh. They're just like tiny drunk people. I love it. Oh. They're so cute. Oh, it's so good. Entering a room belly first. Uh-huh. I love it. <laughs> right. Did you guys notice that nope. when they're reviewing the footage on the laptop, uh, did you guys notice that Brad, the, the dad, has a cold sore? No. What is I did not. Watching this? I was like, what are they trying to say here? Are they saying that he's sneaking out? Ooh, a little touch of herpes. Yeah. yeah he's, I, get, he's getting a Dan Aykroyd and ghost blow job. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Toby have a relationship that they're not ready to come forward with just yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A fellationship. Oh, Burger King's got a new pineapple burger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually do like this bit where, so Allie gets locked outside. Yes. After reviewing the footage, the dad is just like, yeah, the wind blew the door closed and he's yeah. like yelling at her. Yeah. He goes off, he stomps off to his room and I actually really like this bit with Christy trying to calm Allie down. Yeah. She's like, look, I'll go talk to him. I'm yes. sorry this is happening sweetie yeah. like, I think this is good this is good stuff mm-hmm. and I wanted more of that because it just feels like none of these people are communicating with each other I, I do like when they when they you know she gets locked out of the house you sit there for a few minutes and then she just runs up to the glass door hoping that it's unlocked and she just you just hear her go fuck yeah like, <laughs> that was really good. If that's me, uh, brick through the window, Same. right? Like, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. If, there's, if there's a baby there, yeah. Yeah. But uh, when she's going through the house and she comes across the little toy car in the kitchen, <laughs> I was like, oh, Skinamarink is a sham. <laughs> what a ripoff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That something about little toy cars that kids have that make those noise in the middle of the night. They're so creepy. It's Very creepy. terrifying. Yeah. My daughter used to have this uh, cat piano. Oh, we had the cat piano too from Target. Yes. Do you know that's what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you if you don't turn it off, uh-huh. it starts just meowing. Yes. <laughs> so, no, yes. Thank you. I threw that shit right in the trash as soon as Ridley wasn't paying attention. I'm like goodbye <laughs> to this. God, I hated that thing so much. Oh. It would just start like purring and meowing on its own. Yes. <laughs> and like I mean, back in our day, that was the Furby, right? Oh the God. Just come to life for the middle of the night no. oh. shit my sister had a furby that like didn't do anything for a year and a half and then it's <laughs> like one o'clock in the morning after we'd like long forgotten she owned it it just started like talking uh-huh. and, and cackling and it was the fucking craziest thing so that like bitch is a sleeper cell my dad like stumbles in half awake tries to turn it off and it just starts going ah 
<laughs> like, because the batteries are dying. Like, in the middle of the night, it's dead quiet, and all you hear is, I hope you did not masturbate today. <laughs> what the fuck? That's exactly what my Furby sounded like. Yeah, yeah. I had one that would go, I will crawl over <laughs> your house. God, fuck the shit out of you. So... <laughs> We already talked about it, but yeah, the cabinets all flying open is a great effect. Yeah. It's genuinely still so good. It's a good jump scare. That's a great jump scare, and I think she sells it totally well. Like, it's it's really good. But why doesn't she tell anyone? Yeah. She doesn't mention it ever. Yeah. And then she goes like, your Aunt Katie says we can't talk about these things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shut, Shut the, the fuck, fuck up, up. Allie. <laughs> uh, she's like, Allie, come, the fo- come over here. Oh, we can't say a fucking word of this to Katie. <laughs> you hear me? I swear to God. <laughs> it's, um, okay, so this is where it's revealed that hunter is the firstborn male on this side of the family in almost a century and i'm like sure. it's weird that no one's noticed that until now right, right. But also ali has this thing where she's like so that means this curse must have been placed by katie's great grandmother mm-hmm. and i'm just like what like why why does it have to be the great grandmother yeah. can't a curse be placed at any time and she she gets it exactly of like uh, i think it's great grandmother in the 30s yes. who sold her or th- this this hunter to this guy for wealth yeah i'm like okay <laughs> all right you got it you did all the research apparently and now toby's coming for the baby <laughs> And this is the scene of Christy getting drugged down the stairs, and it's re- it's a really good stunt. Yes, but I just I just feel like if it were me uh-huh. and I was being drugged down the stairs by an invisible force, yeah. I would be flailing and freaking the fuck out. Oh sure. And she's just like, no, uh. <laughs> like what? Are, what? Well, so what's so funny is she, it's it's scary the first time she gets yanked, mm-hmm. but then when she goes down the second time and she's like. Uh, 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 greatest comedy of 2010 paranormal activity 2 it's so good and then while she was in the basement she apparently scratched the word milk yeah. in the door m-e-l-k milk. sure i thought mally was playing a prank on me i was like does she is she getting milk what what is this weird wants a glass of milk what is this weird old british way of spelling milk i can't i can't deal with it. the old milk milk <laughs> but these these movies and this is why i wrote this down too is like it's it is impressive in how much of an exercise in patience these movies are uh-huh. that people went and saw these back to back to back and like for most of them for like the first hour nothing happened yeah. like it's testing your patience it's and again this is coming from the guy who loves skin of i love it yeah. i love skin of it's one of my favorite <laughs> movies of last year but I, I don't know at least with that i felt a sense of what the movie was laying down right sure. that, that movie is putting you in the perspective of a child who's scared in the middle of the night and in, in the dark right and I guess there is a big difference between liminal horror and like watching a bunch of people in an opulent house act like assholes. Right. <laughs> yes, and in widescreen cameras, I could see the whole house. Uh-huh. Like I don't know, man. It's just I wish there was there was more happening. Like uh-huh. anytime you watch a paranormal activity and they're like night one, night two, you don't have to worry about shit until about night five. So right. just you know, if you got to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, <laughs> take a nap, whatever you want to do. But it's weird that these movies were so popular and made so much money. And like, yeah, there's they don't take any effort to like do anything interesting until the last thirty minutes of the movie, right. which is annoying because there's so many things you could do. But I don't know, and I don't understand the behavior of the demons in these movies because this this demon pulls Christy down to the basement. She's down there for like an hour and then he bites her on her inner thigh. Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah. What's the... What's the there is was that, a bite in the first movie that right. seemed to be just when the thing took hold of Katie. Yeah. But it's... Yeah. Is it a zombie demon? <laughs> right. It's all this iconography that's not quite explained, but they're also like, oh, do you remember when there was a bite in the first one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then the dad comes home yeah. and says something like he's talking with Vivis the the nanny yeah. uh, what's her name again Marcia Martine Martine, Martine. yeah he, he he brings her back and asks her to help and then she says we got to knock Christy out with something and she just says olive oil I'm like holy shit you can make you can chloroform somebody with just olive oil right. what the fuck are they talking about it's yeah we're only getting parts of what the ritual is going to be uh-huh. and the sudden reveal that they can transfer a spirit yeah it comes out of nowhere it's not explained and it's really poor it's the worst acted scene in the movie i think yes and a lot of it is like the dad doing trying to do the heavy lifting it is but i do like the kind of ambiguousness of like 
if you haven't seen the first movie, you really don't understand what they're talking about. But this sets up the first movie, right? right. And, sure. Yeah. Like they they passed it over to Katie to yeah. try to save Christy, which just the scampiest of moves. <laughs> so scampy. Oh, maybe maybe the dad in this movie is actually the ultimate scamp. I do appreciate that Martine shows up and she's way more useful than the exorcist from the first movie. No, he's just okay. like, I got to go. I can't be here. I disagree. I, that's my favorite part of that first movie. Oh, the guy no. Walks, he's he, like, oh, no, 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 no. No, that's the best <laughs> moment in the first movie. But uh-huh. she's way more useful than him. Him. sure sure no i think that guy was usually told him get the fuck out like, he's I, like I, what does he say he's like i, I can't, can't be, be here, here. Uh, yeah. he's like oh no thank you i can't do this no. and then brad goes down into the basement with the night vision on which i appreciated because it mixed it up a little bit yeah but this is like we talked about earlier at this point in any found footage horror movie why are you still filming right mm-hmm. like I don't know. Well, there's that, but it's also, I mean, the the implication is that he's using the light from the camera to yeah. see as well. Yeah. So that helps a little bit. But the problem with this whole final set piece is that it's like a more boring version of the ending of the first one. Yeah. yeah. Like it's him going from room to room and seeing that something scary just happened. Yeah. Like he comes around the corner and the chandelier is shaking a little bit. He looks down and the couch has just tipped over. Like, yep. It's, yep. yeah, I'm, I'm just like, oh, cool. It would have been really cool if we saw this a second ago. Right. Right. I, I do like, though, when he's in the basement and he drops the camera and you just see little baby Hunter hiding behind the pole. I thought yeah. that was a, genuinely a great shot, but yeah. also also kind of sad. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm like, get that baby out of there. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't need and, to be in there. And I really like this shot of, like, all the dust and wood chips, like, sh- uh, like the, the floor shaking yes, as the yeah. spirit is leaving. Yeah. I think that's really well done. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's so. But again, do I like it or am I just happy that it's something interesting? <laughs> Something's finally <laughs> happening. Well, see, this is where it, it goes back to skin in my rink because barely anything happens in that movie. Sure. In terms of actual things happening on screen. But I'm way more invested in that movie uh-huh. because you can't even say, oh, you like the characters because there's really not characters in that movie. Right. But I don't know. I, I and I'm comparing Paranormal Activity 2 to one of the most successful horror movies of like the last uh-huh. 10 years. But um, no, I just I don't know. I, th- I think low budget horror you can do a lot with if you get innovative with it yeah. instead of just this is a copy paste from the first movie. Let's just change the characters up a little bit. Yes. And it's yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't have any other notes until the ending. Do you guys have anything? No. My last note is that Christy does not know the melody to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Oh, she right. doesn't. Not at right. all. She's like Twinkle Twinkle Little. <laughs> it's like that video of Kamala Harris singing Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round. Yeah. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Okay, so the end of the movie here, the dad transfers the demon to... I, oh, I, I forgot to mention, I do like when uh, Hunter's crying in the crib and uh, Chrissy's just staring out the window. I thought that was a real creepy moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very haunting. And when the, when the dad goes in there, she just leaps across the room and attacks him. That was really good. Yeah. So the dad transfers the demon to Katie. Mm-hmm. They, they show that he's he burns the picture of the two of them when they were kids. And that's how he ends up burned in the first movie. Mm-hmm. We actually do some intercutting. How to get burned. Yeah, how to get burned. Uh, they actually do some good intercutting with the first movie, too. Yes. Like, they kind of bump up right next to each other. Oh, yeah. Ashley goes, oh, shit, the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the little Miata or whatever she drives. Yeah. Uh-huh, her little car. <laughs> So we kind of skip forward a little bit a couple days later. Katie comes to Christy's house. She's it is a pretty good reveal that like the dad's watching TV and then uh, Katie's in the back covered in blood after having just killed Mika. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's <laughs> Dunkin Donuts sponsored this scene, by the way, too. Uh-huh. this commercial that's playing in the background. <laughs> so Katie comes up behind Daniel, the dad, uh-huh. and snaps his neck while he's watching TV. And boy, he leaps off the couch. He does. His little hop. I don't know why they they decided this was the take to use because He's, he flops like a fish. It's yep. really it's so funny. Good. I, God damn it. It's still just as funny the second time seeing it. Yeah. And Chrissy's upstairs with Hunter and this is m- maybe the most effectively scary moment of the movie mm. because Chrissy's just standing in the baby's room at night holding Hunter like comforting him out of the shadows of the dark. Oh, Katie yeah. just comes marching out of the shadows yeah. yes. and then does the the shove kill to kill Christy and demon push yeah and baby hunter drops to the floor someone running towards a camera will never not be scary to me right. i mean get out right uh, like yeah, right. Exactly. The, the running in the guard yeah. yeah but i i like that it's just simple it's her in the shadows she marches out like she is on a death march and then you just hear christy go katie and then just she just kills her right there yeah it's really good and then yeah she she takes hunter and kidnaps him and we get like some text that says like uh you know these two daniel and christy died on this night hunter and katie are still at 
still missing. And the daughter came home yeah. to find her parents dead after being gone on a school trip. Oof. Uh, oof. What a, what a. Oof. That's the toughest bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't remember much about these later sequels, but the daughter never comes back, right? No. I don't think so. Yeah. Mm -mm. In fact, the story of Katie is kind of over after the third one, right? Well, uh, in the ghost dimension, um, I think they. <laughs> um, in the ghost dimension. Um, actually. Um... I can't believe a sentence starts off like that. <laughs> this, is, this is what I sounded like in the Batman Returns episode. <laughs> I think there is reference to like a weird neighbor with a child name hunter Got it. oh right Got it. Okay. yes yeah so there's never closure for this story okay all right i don't remember honestly at all yeah i know i've seen them yeah i've seen up to the third one i don't think i or i've seen the fourth one i don't remember seeing any of the other ones i've seen all of them and i really couldn't tell you much about it <laughs> right right <laughs> But I do think it's a pretty great choice to have no music over these ending credits mm -hmm. and just put some droning audio. And the sound of the little kid's toy again was really good. Mm -hmm. It honestly just made me want to watch Skinner Marie. What if it did end with it cutting to black and you hear, my name is Kid. <laughs> yes. Better movie. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good idea. Because you know how it, it, it credits, there's always like the first song <laughs> and they have like some weird second song that you use. Like that would be if you put Kid Rock as the second song, like, man. <laughs> But for some reason, they also do like two Paramount logos at the end. I don't know if you guys stayed through the credits. No. But like The credits roll. Paramount activity. The credits roll. Then they show the Paramount logo. Then there's like some final little like production cards. And then Paramount comes up again. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like the credits for a Tyler Perry movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 Paranormal Activity 2. Uh, any final thoughts or notes that you guys have? Nah. Uh, just a real slog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like there's there's stuff to like. I couldn't have made it through this movie if I wasn't watching it with Ashley and we weren't like riffing as it was going on. See, that's how it started with me and Priscilla and then uh -huh. she fell asleep and she left <laughs> me there by myself to deal with it. But Melly uh, was talking out loud to himself and then fell asleep. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I've zoned out during this fucking episode. I'm gonna <laughs> I was going to say, you've been awfully quiet over there. Why don't we do this? Why don't we say now our recommendations? Because I have a feeling we're all going to say no, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say like, uh, you can skip it. Mm -hmm. The third one especially doesn't really need any of the stuff from this one mm -hmm. in fact the third one outright contradicts the fact that they keep talking about their mom going crazy with a with a ghost mm -hmm. so uh yeah just skip from the first one and go to the third one yeah mm. okay i think there's some some good bits of comedy in here uh -huh. and unintentionally i should say and i think it's I don't know. I think if you like the first one, you might like this, uh -huh. but it is a chore to get through. And uh, like most of these movies, maybe like, I, I don't know, maybe if you if you can supercut of both of them. Well, I was going to say, maybe if you fast forward through all of the repetitive uh, establishing shots, yeah. then maybe that helps. But yeah, I don't know. This movie's 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think you could tie both these movies together in like one super movie. I think you could do that. Mm -hmm. But um, the worst thing a movie can be even more so than being bad is boring, right? Sure. Like. Even a bad movie, you can get some entertainment value out of, but this mostly is a boring movie. Yeah, so I agree. Mally, recommendations? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh let's move on over to Prop Cop. And uh, Prop Cop is obviously where we look at all of the props in the movie Paranormal Activity 2, and we each take one for ourselves, just as a bit of fantasy. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I wanted the little porcelain bunny <laughs> that the daughter asked about putting a camera in. Yes. I've got four rabbits of my own, so why not have a little a fifth one? Aw. <laughs> How about you, Nathan? What what prop do you want? There is a pillow. And that was my second option. <laughs> I knew it. That was my second option. There is a pillow that I see that you see multiple times in this movie that just says choo choo, -choo. on it. <laughs> what is so funny? That was that was my second option. Uh, I I was upset. I like every time it came into the shot, I just go choo choo. <laughs> Uh, Ashley, what about you? What prop do you want? Choo Choo was also my backup. Uh -huh. but, um, I want the giant painting of a parrot sitting on someone's <laughs> hand uh <-huh. laughs> that gets knocked down in the in the uh, robbery. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mally, what about you? Um, I'm going to take the um, butterfly knife that Caster Troy gives uh, John Travolta's daughter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. This might be a first, but I'm going to like force you to take a prop for this movie and you get the cheese at casserole. So there you go. <laughs> Enjoy that. Yeah, let me know how it is. I'll come through. <laughs> mm, tasty. I can't I can't believe, Ashley, you and I are the only sane ones on this episode. No, I would not. I'm going to pull up with a plate. Oh, my God. I would never. All right, before I throw up, let's get the bit part, um, which is going to 
be very difficult because... I had an idea. Oh, okay. 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 So bit part, for those who don't know, is where we uh, pick extra roles in the movie, non-main characters, to play ourselves. <laughs> and I I, I got to hear what you got, Nathan. Who, what is your bit part for Paranormal Activity 2? So there's a poster for the Ramones <laughs> album Rocket to Russia on uh-huh. the wall. And I think we should all pose as the Ramones for that poster. Okay. I like that. I like that. <laughs> this is turning into like Alfred Hitchcock cameos in movies. Like, <laughs> sure. like in Rope, he couldn't be in the movie because it all takes place in the one apartment. So right. he just made himself the neon sign outside his silhouette. That's right. Uh-huh. Yes. So this is us. We're just going to be the Ramones poster. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like that idea. Yeah. Or or we can be all the people in the Dunkin' Donuts commercial. True. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, did anyone have a, a bit part? Like an, Yeah, like, I have one. Okay. What is it? The surgeon who does the face transplant surgery. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's a good one. I like the idea that Mally's just watched Face Off mm-hmm. while the, this movie was playing. He's got two <laughs> screens up like Michael Keaton's Batman. It's picture in picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, during the Paranormal Activity episode, I watched Con Air. That's so right. So you know, to continue that trend. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Ashley, did you happen to have a bit part or no? No, I was trying to come up with something and I just couldn't. Yeah. And that only leaves the uh, camera installation guy. And no, thanks. I yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah, I, nope. No, thank you. Don't want to do that. All right. We're going to get into the silver linings now. And I'm going to go ahead and go first because I might have an unconventional one. Okay. My silver lining is that everyone at the Burger King that Daniel owned (laughs) is probably going to be less stressed out because he seemed like a nightmare of a boss. Yeah. Right? That's good. Yeah. This guy definitely comes in to the building. Everyone straightens up because they don't want to be yelled at. And you know this guy's making inappropriate comments to (laughs) his female. Like, you just (laughs) just feel it. This guy gives off that energy. Uh, You you know it. You know it. That guy's coming through and taking all the the quarters out of the March of Dimes uh, jar on the front. Oh, my God, yes. Yes, that see that's perfect. That is a perfect description <laughs> of this guy. Yeah, absolutely. He would also be the one to yell at you for not having your visor on like exactly perfect. Right. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, that sounds about white. That sounds about white. <laughs> yeah, Mally, what about you? What's your silver lining? Uh, I mean, Archer and Eve adopt Casper <laughs> to our son Adam. Absolutely, that is a beautiful moment. I was waiting for it. <laughs> That's what it was gonna be. That is a beautiful moment. We could use some face waterfalls in this movie. We should, yeah. That's all. That's all Toby wanted. He just wanted someone to face waterfall. <laughs> Ashley, what's your silver lining? The security cameras work really well. They do. <laughs> they got their money. Hey, the Burger King did not skimp out on cameras. No. Yeah. Nathan? So they never go pick up the dog from the vet, so Abby's fine. Yeah. Abby made it through this whole thing, presumably is on the mend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is just okay. Just okay. And probably with a better fucking family. Uh-huh. Probably. Yeah, my, my backup, which is, I'm surprised no one went with, but uh, Allie didn't have to die. Sure. Didn't have to watch her father get his neck snapped. Didn't have to watch her mother get demon shoved. Yeah. And uh, didn't have to watch her little brother get kidnapped. Sure. Uh, she, I mean, she's going to die alone now, but sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. She will never find love. <laughs> we were reminded that Mika's dead. That right. is true. Yeah. That is very true. Good riddance. That's always nice. <laughs> uh huh. R.I.P. Well, we always like to uh, pair the movie of the week with an alternate, or as we like to call it, double feature. A movie you watch right after Paranormal Activity Two to balance things out in case uh, Paranormal left you a little dour. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a recommendation. Uh, well, I do want to give a little side one. I do think I mentioned this before, but yeah, go watch Skin and Rink. This will yeah. this movie will be like dog shit compared to Skin and Rink. So go enjoy that. But my actual recommendation, my actual pick me up is uh, if you want another suburban horror flick that's set on the West Coast. And it's actually a good movie. I'm going to recommend the remake of Fright Night. Oh, right on. Because I just saw that movie for the first time last year, and I was shocked how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I saw the remake when it came out. I have not revisited it, but I've I've heard it holds up better than I remember. It's really fun. It's really good. Like I, I'm a sucker for Imogen Poots in a movie. Uh-huh. Anton Yelkin, Colin Farrell, yeah. David Tennant. Like, it was... It's really good. It was a really good movie. David Tennant's great in that movie. He's so fun. He's so much fun. If you want to see someone make fun of Chris Angel for a fucking hour, watch that movie. <laughs> and I do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> in fact, I do. Nathan, what about you? What's your pick me up? I was thinking about uh, ghost movies that make me smile mm-hmm. after this one just kind of left me bored. <laughs> Um, I would recommend 1996's The Frighteners, directed by Peter Jackson. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, super fun movie that I've been meaning to rewatch for a while. Right on. Okay. 
Uh, Mally, what about you? Um, I mean, I know I've recommended it before, but I mean, if you want to keep that Nick Cage train going, mm-hmm. yes, sir, Gone in sixty seconds. Hell yeah, <laughs> that might be your most most suggested movie as a pick. I think that's up. like the, yeah, <laughs> like the sixteenth time in this show's history. But you know what? He's never wrong. Yeah, yeah because wow, that I'm movie wrong. slaps. <laughs> it's, it's a fun movie. It's a definitely un- overlooked, underrated movie. Absolutely. And I think did I recommend that in the Fast and Furious episode? Oh, like, I, think so. I feel like it comes up a lot. It does come up a lot. Uh, Ashley, what about you? I went with a movie where two sisters are dealing with spooky stuff uh, as well. Mm, white chicks. White chicks. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Practical Magic. Hell oh, my yeah. God. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's a good one. Yeah. Love that movie. All right. Well, if you want to give us your feedback about the movie Paranormal Activity 2 or about the show in general, you could do so by emailing us at the playlist gmail.com. You can also DM us on Instagram or Twitter and follow us on those two platforms as well as on TikTok. If you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, feedback, all that good stuff. We'd really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Tell your friends and family about the show. And uh, you can also check out our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash playlist. Now... There is officially only one movie left of the season before we get to our season finale. Yeah. And it is Mally's choice. So, Mally, I'm going to turn it over to you for one last clue for the season of your picks. So, tell us what we're talking about next week. Copy that. Um, I'm going to do our clue a little differently. Oh. And here it is. (laughs) <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's good. I have not seen next week's movie. Uh-huh. It's going to be a first time watch for me. I've been saving it because I knew we were doing it for the show. Sure. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, yeah, we'll also find out what our season finale is going to be next week. Yeah. Uh, we've already decided. Uh-huh. I think we all, I, I want to pitch the idea we all come up with a clue separately. Yeah. I, I've got one locked and loaded just in case. Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited. Okay. I'm also really excited to revisit next week's movie. I am too because I, I you think. You haven't seen it? No, I'm sorry. I meant the finale. Oh, yes. I think the finale, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Uh-huh. Uh, but I am excited to see next week's movie as well because I have not seen it. I've heard good things, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, the finale might be our first six-hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> we might be here a while. You might be settling in. We're bringing back every guest from every <laughs> season. Can you imagine? We're officially in-gaming it. Uh- <laughs> yeah. Nathan's going to pick up a hammer. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, Ashley, for coming back once again to the show. I appreciate it. No problem. And uh, I guess one last time on this episode, there we go. Uh, We'll have a ceremonial Doritos chip here. Uh, One second. Mm. Why did you moan? Moan. (laughs) The moaning. (laughs) And uh, as always, (laughs) Excelsior. (laughs) Enjoy your cheese at casserole. I could eat a peach all day. Is there some low humming I'm supposed to be hearing? Mm. (laughs) 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 That was fucking perfect. Excelsior! 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 Look it up! Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!